Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the refrigerator washer inner bellow spring clamp. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new inner bellow spring clamp. The inner bellow spring clamp holds the bellow to the outer tub. The main reason you be changing it out is if it's damaged and you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to get to the part, we have to take the top of the washer off. We're going to go around back and use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. Once you have the screws out, we can lift the top off. First, we have to pull it back about a half an inch or so, so the front lip comes out from underneath the control panel. Once you have it released, we can lift it off and set it aside. Now that we have the top off, we can take the detergent drawer out. All you have to do is pull it out till it stops, and then on the back left corner, there's a little release tab that you have to press down on, and you can pull it out the rest of the way. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. There's three screws. There's two long ones that hold the dispenser to the console, and then a shorter one that holds the console to the washer. Now that we have the three screws out on the front of the console, we can remove the two on the back. There's one on each side. We're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Now that we have all the screws out, we can release the locking tabs. There's three of them. They go across the back of the console. All you have to do is lift up on them to release them, and then carefully pull it on the frame as you release them so they don't snap back in. Once you have the last tab released, you have to shake it a little bit. There's two pins right here that you have to make sure come out of those holes. Once you have it released, you can set the control panel on the top of the washer. Now that we have the console out of the way, we can open up the door, and we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that hold the door lock to the front panel. In order to get the clamp off, there's a spring located down at 6 o'clock. We're going to have to lift this up and carefully get underneath it with a small flathead screwdriver. We can lift up on it and go clockwise around the clamp to pull it out of the groove. Once you have it off, you can pull it out of the washer. Now that we have the clamp off, we can pull the seal off the front panel. We're just going to grab it and carefully pull it away from the front panel all the way around the front opening. Once you have it off, you can kind of tuck it behind the panel, and then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to remove all the screws that hold the front panel on. First, we're going to take off the screws at the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and take off the screws at the top. Once you have the second screw out, we have to go back over to this side and release the clip for the door switch wiring harness. To release the wire harness, all you have to do is pull out on the panel a little bit, and then we can take our needle nose and compress the clip and push it through the panel. Once you have it out, we can go take out the last screw. As you're taking the last screw out, you want to make sure you support the panel with your hip. And once you have the last screw out, you can use the door to help lift it off. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the front panel off, we can take this vent hose off. We're going to reach in with the wire cutters and cut the zip tie so we can pull it out. Once you have the zip tie off, you can carefully pull it out. Once you have it out, you can just put it out of the way. Now that we have the vent hose out of the way, we have access to the inner bellow spring clamp. It goes around the 
bellow seal and attaches it to the tub. We're just going to use a flathead screwdriver and take it off at the bottom. Just want to carefully get underneath the bellow. If you're going to reuse it, you don't want to damage it. Once you have the screwdriver underneath the spring, you just want to carefully lift it out all the way around the whole bellow. As you're taking the spring clamp off, you want to be careful. It is a large spring and could snap off. Once you have it out, you can pull it off the washer. Here's the old inner bellow spring clamp next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Since we're just replacing the spring in this video and not the seal, you want to take and get this out of the way. Just tuck it inside. And then you want to make sure that the seal is still lined up at 12 o'clock with the arrow and that it's in the groove all the way around before you try to put the new clamp on. If you bought the seal assembly, it came with these pins that you would push in around the spring as you worked it around. Since we're just putting the spring in, it doesn't come with those. So we're going to use some clamps to hold the spring as we go around and stretch it. We're going to put some liquid soap in the spring groove to make it easier to put the spring in. We're just going to put a little bit on, not a lot. When you put the spring clamp on, you want to make sure that you don't overstretch it, otherwise you'll ruin the spring. You only want to stretch it out about that much so it goes around the whole area and seals everything. So as you're putting it in, you have to make sure you stretch that amount evenly around the whole spring. You don't want to try to stretch one side a lot and the other side not at all. So what we're going to do is use some clamps and we're going to clamp onto the spring right here, onto the lip of the tub and that's going to lock the spring into the rubber so it won't retract. And then we're going to stretch it out and put another clamp so this section stays stretched out. If one of these sections slips and you let the spring retract, you're going to have to re-stretch it before you put the next one out. Otherwise, you're going to get around to the bottom and you're not going to have enough spring left to get it stretched all the way around the seal. We're going to start over here around 2 o'clock and whether you're going to use clamps or dowels that can go in here, you want to make sure that it's very tight and when you put them on that it stops the spring from sliding and releasing the tension. So we're just going to put a big clamp here. Once you have the first clamp on, you want to pull this section up and get it in the groove and then we're going to stretch it and then we're going to put a clamp right here. So we're going to stretch it out and then put a clamp right there to hold it. And you want to make sure that it presses the spring into the rubber so it locks into place and you don't lose this tension over here. And we're just going to go down and stretch it out some more and try to get a clamp over here right around 10 o'clock or so. As you're working around, remember you don't want to stretch this area too much. You want to make sure that you pull down back here and get the whole spring to give you some extra length. If you stretch too much on this area down here, you're just going to damage the spring. You want to be careful because it's tight down there. You don't want to hurt your fingers, but you want to get it up into the groove. And once you have it in place, we can take all the clamps off. Once you have all the clamps off, you want to pull the bellow out and put it back in position. And then you want to pull it on a few times to make sure it's good. You don't want it to come off while you're doing a load of wash. Once you're sure that inner bellow spring clamp is on securely, we can hook the vent hose back up. In order to put the vent hose in, we're just going to grab the open end and put it into the fitting. You want to make sure it goes down all the way. Once you have it in place, we can put a new zip tie on to hold it in. Mm -hmm. 
Once you have the zip tie on, we can cut off the excess. And then we can put the front panel back on the washer. To put the front panel on, we're just going to line it up and set it onto the little tabs and hold it up. And once you have everything lined up and in place, you can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now we can put the lower screws on. To put the door switch assembly in, we're just gonna move the door seal out of the way, reach in and grab the assembly, and line it up. Once you're holding it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put one of the screws in. Once you have one screw in, you can let go of it, and then we can put the other screw in and tighten it down. Now that we have the door switch mounted, we can put the door seal and the clamp back on the front panel. To put the door seal on, we're just going to pull it out from behind the front panel. And then we want to make sure that the lip on the seal goes in the groove on the front panel all the way around so we can put the clamp in to hold it in place. Once you have it on all the way around, we can put the clamp on. To put the clamp back on, you want to make sure that the spring is down at 6 o'clock, just like when we took it off. And then you're going to work it around clockwise until you get to around 3 o'clock where it's not going to move anymore. And then we're going to grab the clamp with the locking pliers. And we're going to stretch the spring out, but you want to make sure you pull straight towards the side of the machine. If you pull towards the front, you're just going to pull it off. So just stretch it out a little bit so it's in the groove. and then you can release the locking pliers. Once you have it in place, we can close the washer door. Before we put the control panel on, we're going to reach in and lock the wiring harness into the front panel. All you have to do is line it up with the hole and snap it into place. Once you have it in, we can put the control panel on. To put the control panel on, all you have to do is rotate it down and snap it into place. You want to make sure that the two pins line up with the openings in the front panel. Once you have those in there, we can snap it into place. Once you have it back in, we can put the screws in to hold in place. Now that we have all the screws in, we can put the detergent drawer back in. To put the drawer in, all you have to do is line it up on the rails and push it all the way back in. Once you have it in, we can put the top on. To put the washer top back on, you want to set it back about an inch or so from the console and then set it down. Then you can push it forward so the front end locks into the console. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in to hold it in. Now that you're done repairing the appliance, you can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.